What's happening, everybody? Happy Friday. For a little bit of fighting fun, I want to do something I've wanted to get back to for a while. Showing off different kind of boxes, containers of my collection, which contain tons of different, or like a nice solid mix of comics because, as I kind of alluded to in my goals, 2021 goals video, I have to reintegrate a bunch of comics from this past decade, especially these last few years, back into my larger comic collection. So I have a lot of containers that are just full of mixes of books that were read and like just picked up and read some years ago. So that's what I wanted to do. But part of this was why I'm dropping this now is because Gals of Ministry, again, shout out to you and I always appreciate the support. Thanks again. It, well, one of his recent comments was about, uh, I think it was on my last, my comic shop order that I got in and unboxed that and just kind of going through that and how it must've been fun to go through and this also kind of well, alludes to another video that I want to drop, which is kind of, uh, the basis is the some of the things that I enjoy within the comics hobby besides, or excluding the actual reading comics, which is obviously the best part. But one of, the, one of my favorite things to do is just going through my collection. Sometimes I will go in my comic room and I will pull out a, or just kind of go through a box, a uh, tote, which is what I use primarily to store my comics and I just flip through and going through the cover art, just thinking about some of the stories that I've read, good and bad, because hey, that's how it is. But yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. So this one, I don't know what these actually, or how many are actually in this one, because it's been a while since I've gone through this one, which means it's perfect. Actually, these are kind of sorted though from, uh, so you do kind of follow a bit of a pet, or there is some kind of logical sorting here, so we go through this. But what I like to do with these is, <clears throat> I like to, when everything is perfect, I like to keep them in uh, or 125 comics in each of these because that means for every four, I have 500 books. And it's just easy way to keep track and uh, count. So yeah, so let's jump right in. First up we have uh, Batman 700. This was, I don't know what year this was. Mm, don't know. Oh, August 2010. Wow. So we got giant size anniversary issue. Love these uh, anniversary landmark issues they're just cool some of them i do uh just because they usually have some cool art and just a mix of stories and creators we got grant morrison tony daniel david finch who did the cover andy kubert and frank quietly andy kubert man i love that guy there we yeah, have frank uh not frank but david finch cover here was big and got over to dc and started doing a whole bunch of stuff there yeah <laughs> <laughs> Batman 700. We got a bunch more Batman there. Actually, no, not a bunch more. Just a couple more. So, let's show those off as well. Uh, Graham Morris and Tony Daniel. R.I.P. The Missing Chapter 701. Uh, this is, I think I like this one. I like this cover a lot. Uh, 702 there. Well, not a lot, but I mean, I really dig that cover. And then the Robins there. A prelude to Bruce Wayne, The Road Home. So, Damien. And then, is that Tim Drake? I can't remember. I wasn't always into all the Robins. They were just just characters who were just kind of there. So yeah, uh, 700, 701, and 703. And then, let's see, this should be, is the whole miniseries in here? Yeah. So yeah, so next up we have, try to keep this up. Uh, Black Lightning, year one. So this is a six issue miniseries. This is cool, Jefferson Pierce, Black Lightning. Uh, who's Van Meter and Hamner? Cully Hamner. Is that Jen Van, is Jen Van Meter? That last name is, I still, I think I feel like it's Jen. But yeah, so number one there. Number two. Number three, you got Superman there. I think it was a solid, pretty solid memory, mini series from what I remember. Obviously it's been some years since I read this. Number four, we're just kind of detailing uh, Black Lightning's early years in his superhero career. Number five, I want you to help take back Suicide Slum. And number six, wrapping it up, wrapping it up there. I actually, I feel like, do I remember picking up some of these issues? I feel like I'm thinking, unless I'm thinking of a different, no, maybe I'm thinking of a different Black Lightning. Was there another Black Lightning series? I don't remember. But we're not done with Black Lightning. Oh, I got some more. Uh, so next up we have, this is Brave and the Bold, number 24. Static Shock and Black Lightning, or just Static and Black Lightning. One of this one just because. 
We got Matt Wayne and Howard Porter on this one. Howard Porter, who's done or did a lot of work on The Flash. So Batman, uh, Black Lightning, Superman, Green Lantern. I think that's, which one is that? I think that's, is that Howard Jordan? Can't tell. I usually tell by the mask if they're, but I have no idea. Wonder Woman and The Flash there. And next up I got just, I personally got this one for the cover because I don't really care about Final Crisis. But Grant Morrison and Matthew Clark, Norm Ratman, this is Final Crisis submits in this dope ass Black Lightning cover. I remember seeing this one and it's like, oh, I have to get that book. And I found it. Oh, good times. This is, I think a lot of this was when, actually, you know, no, this was some years after, but my explosion into like my expansion as far as comic reading collecting was such a fun time because the, and I talked about this several times, but I try to just make a video dedicated strictly to it. I think I've thought about it before, just haven't done it. But conventions around 2005 when I started, was it 2005? Yeah, 2005 when I started going to conventions and be at the, the different publishers booths and you start getting promo material and like you could get conventions back then. I remember Wizard World, you get uh, like a, uh, an exclusive convention, a convention exclusive comic. And I used to, I have several of those, especially like, again, Wizard World, Chicago Comic Con. But yeah, like C2E2 was huge. Wizard World shows and just like that, man, just helped like just expand my comic reading and I would just get it exposed to so much, uh, so many other just publishers, stories, creators, characters. It was, man, it was fantastic. Next up we have, I think I got this one. Did I get this one at a convention? I don't remember. But here is Justice, the 12 issue miniseries. I actually been meaning to reread this. It's been so long. And in one of my, I don't know, actually, did I get that? I feel like in the last year, there's a, for this one is number one, this is the hero cover. There's a variant that has the villains cover, or that has all the villains. And I just picked that, I feel like I just got that in the last couple years, but I could be thinking of a different uh, title. But, oh uh, yeah, Alex Ross, Jim Kruger, Doug Braithwaite. Whew. Yeah, I'll show them off as well, because you got fantastic Alex Ross work there, who's just an absolute champion. Over two, really, really like the green on that one with the logo, and then uh, down at the bottom there, and I go into a little bit of yellow. Marshall Manhunter, number three, burn it all down, and uh, Radniac, Bizarro, there, like Luthor. I feel like that's, is that right? Yeah, that should be Radniac and Luthor there. Uh, Wonder Woman and Cheetah, number five. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm pulling these out, I'm reading these. <laughs> Cause I've been wanting to anyway for a while. Uh, number six, Poison Ivy. Who doesn't love Poison Ivy, seriously? Dope. I feel like she's one of those characters as well, who's gotten, who's gotten steadily, hers, or whose popularity has grown steadily, especially within this last, not even just this decade, but these last, what, six, seven years. And like her profile is steadily growing with comic fans and just outside with more exposure. So I feel like her, her status is definitely, and she can, def there's room for her to grow, but I feel like she's definitely one who's, uh, who's on the rise. And then Hawkman and Hawk Girl, I love her for Hawk Girl. But that's all, also weird why she got called Hawk Girl and he got called Hawk Man. Why wasn't she called Hawk Woman? Like Hawkman and Hawk Woman, like why not? I don't understand that. And Flash and Captain Cold, number eight. Yeah, man. I don't say I don't care about the Marvel family, but I'm okay with Shazam, Captain Marvel, and Black Adam, especially Black Adam. But the rest of the Marvel family, like all of them people, Mary Marvel or whoever else, like I, I don't care about them at all. Like even in the Captain Marvel movie, which was or Shazam, which honestly I was just a little bit too goofy for my taste. Like I didn't care about it then, but it was cool to see Megan Good because I was a surprise. I didn't expect to see her. We got Black uh, Black Canary and Green Arrow who are dope together. Uh, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, and Sinestro, number 11. And then rounding it out, we got a whole lot of people on this one. Red Tornado, Zatanna, uh, Robin. I think that's Plastic, Plastic Man. Yeah, I, I honestly always get Plastic Man and Elongated Man mixed up. And I don't know, I can't tell you. Like I just had, sometimes it's just a costume that pulls it back in mind. Like the red versus the purple, but yeah, any other any other day, like 
who knows which one, I guess. Oh man, so many memories here. I don't think I have all of them. I think this is one I picked up just as we're getting into some Justice League here, or Justice League of America. Uh, this was a pretty cool run. With, I didn't Actually, I never finished reading this whole run, but I do have, if you follow my, uh, if you've been following me for a while, at least peep some of my haul videos, I picked up a bunch of this run from one of my favorite shops, and I got them either all for, from the dollar bin section, but I think I got it during their, uh, one of their filler back sales. And so I was able to just snatch up and I think, I, yeah, I did complete the whole run. So I will be able to finally finish that. Cause I read through most, I think it ran 60 issues. Yeah, 60 issues and I read through in the twenties and then a couple issues like kind of scattered throughout the rest of that. But it was one I definitely wanted to uh, dig into. But here's number two, Red Tornado. This one, I don't know, I forgot who did this cover. I think there, I wonder if there's a variant, because I know uh, we got some Michael Turner and Peter Steigerwall variants in here. There's number four, Red Arrow, Arsenal, is that one of his names? Black and Air, Green Arrow, or you know, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, Brad Meltzer, Ed Bennis, Sandra Hope. Ed Bennis, who I met in 2011 at San Diego Comic Con, the first and only time I've ever been there. And it was fantastic. That was I wasn't even doing. I don't think I was even doing YouTube there. But I would have had. I would have came back with so much, uh, like footage and even, probably even more pictures. But I took a ton of pictures there, and uh, I don't think I even have them uploaded anywhere except Facebook. But yeah, San Diego Comic Con 2011. Ed Bennis in his first U.S. con appearance. I took a ton of. That was when I was taking a ton of books to conventions to get signed. But I kind of faded off of that as the years kind of went on because it was just a lot. And I was like, you know what, I'm bringing more books here and I'm steadily buying a bunch of books and I'm taking a ton of books back home. So let me just cut down on books. And uh, yeah, so that's number four. And then here's the variant. I think this is featuring Vixen. I feel like this is J.G. Jones, but I could be wrong. J.G. Jones, huh, yep. And we got my girl, hot girl number five. Yeah, this is some cool stuff here. Ed Bennis is a, whew. All right, that's Arthur Adams cover there. Uh, Red Tornado again. This was that first arc was centered. Well, the beginning was just kind of establishing the team. I think, I think there was a zero issue was who's in. Yeah, free comic book day issue. Who's in number zero, and then uh, it's kind of setting up like oh who's going to be in it, and then it centered around. Or Red Tornado had a big play or a big or a big role in that opening arc there. I think it ran that first six issues. Yeah, it must have been. I don't think it did. Or this is just a variant, actually. But here's Black Canary by Adam Hughes. Of course. It's like nothing less from Adam Hughes, A.H. And then uh, Michael Turner, Peter Steigerwald, Peter Steigerwald again. We got uh, Power Girl, Black Canary, and I don't say I don't remember who she is. Let's see. The Lightning Saga concludes. Justice Society of America. What comes from beyond? We got so this jumps up to 17 here. Uh, Black Lightning, Bernard, Ben, Bennis, and Hope. Oh, we got McDuffie and Myers. So then McDuffie took over at one point, and there's that zero issue again. I don't know how long he was on this though. Ah, so many memories, so many cool stories. I don't even know how far, how far I'm gonna go into this. This is a lot. Uh, and then here is the uh, free comic book day: Superman, Batman, number one. What does it say here? Mm. Jeff Loeb at McGinnis, Dexter Vines. Yeah, that's just it. So yeah, free comic book day of that. And I'm still working on this run. I picked up a bunch of this within this last year. And I remember I had to get this back then. I, I didn't even care about this title. I don't care about the Justice Society, but man, Alex Ross, Power Girl, Jeff Johns, Dale Eagle Sham, and Rudy Jose. I just wanted the Power Girl cover because just look at that. She is absolutely badass, and look at that face. She was like, you're not, do not mess with me. And then, let's see. Oh, I got, you know what, I might go through all this, and I'll just stop with this right here, because this is a lot. But, speaking of Power Girl, here is uh, the new, so when Power Girl series was, she had a little series here. This was the issue 13. This was the kickoff of the, or it was a new art, new, new creative team, Judd Winnick and Sammy Basri. I like Sammy Basri. 
I have no idea where the hell Judd Winnick's been. I feel like I just haven't seen his name, but I feel like, I wonder if he's been doing TV stuff though. That might be, I wonder, if everybody knows, drop in the comments below. But I feel like he's been doing a lot more TV stuff within the last, um, this last decade, because what year was this? This was 2010, yeah. And then here's uh, 14, uh, Crash Test. Wait, yeah, Crash Test, I like that one. Uh, crash Course. 15, or 15, there's 16. Enter Batman. That's 17 there. And what's Power Girl without some Supergirl love? So there's Supergirl number one. The uh, Turner Starter Wall, Starter Wall cover there. This was the main cover. Loeb, Churchill, and Radman on this one. There can only be, or there can be only one Supergirl. This was 2005. And versus Teen Titans, number two. Lex Luthor in his power suit. Honestly, I still don't even know the roots of that one, but this was a fun run for the most part. I think in the middle of the entire run, it was like 60. No, wait. Did it run 60? I feel like it went past 67. Was it? Did it get into the 70s? Honestly, I can't remember offhand. But here's number four. You got Judgment. And this is one I've alluded to before. Here's Supergirl 5. So this has... Uh, Ian Churchill, Michael Turner, and Peter Steigerwald. But Ian Churchill did Supergirl in a black costume, and then Turner and Steigerwald did uh, main Supergirl there. And then there's a variant which features them, those same artists, but doing the other version of Supergirl, which I did, I did pick up within, I think within the last couple years. So that was cool. And then, oh, this was nice too. I like these suits. Nightwing and, or, yeah, Nightwing and Flamebird. This is kind of cool. These have been, they've been around in a couple of different stories, I feel like. Greg Rucka, Ed Bennis, and Norm Rappin here. The dynamic duo of Candor. That's some cool stuff. And then Joe Kelly was on this. Uh, man, I absolutely dig Joe Kelly. I don't care about the Deadpool stuff, but he did I Kill Giants and uh, some Supergirl stuff. Some amazing Spider-Man and just all just top-notch stuff. He's also part of the Man of Action, which is, I don't know if they're, what do they do? I know they do something connected with TV shows and cartoons, maybe maybe cartoons, but maybe it is all anime and stuff, but maybe like a production company or they do something, I forgot, but whatever Man of Action, whatever they do, he's a part of that. I don't know if he, he might have been like a co-founder, co-creator of that company, whatever, or that group, but... Here we go, more Supergirl, unmasked, one year later. Number seven, and Supergirl vs. Power Girl for the freedom of Kandor. Supergirl number eight. Uh, who's on this one? Oh, the, uh, what's Benitez? Joe Benitez, is that his name? Kelly, I don't know who Adrian and Lee are, but those are some of the creative team on that one. Supergirl, Law's Daughter of Krypton. Supergirl number nine. And then one of my absolute favorite covers of the entire, actually two of these covers. Wait, did I have this one this whole time? Or am I thinking of? Never mind, but anyways, this next cover is one of my favorites as well. But this one, Joshua Middleton, this newspaper cover in the black and white kind of gray included in the, or part of the cover there. But Supergirl versus uh, Silver Banshee. Is it Silver Banshee? Yeah. I think that's her name, Silverman. It's been so long since I said that name. Uh, Supergirl number 34. Uh, Gates, what's Sterling Gates, Jamal Weigel, and... Is that Keith Chaffin? I feel like I just made that first name up. I don't know. But yeah, Joshua Milton. Anything he did with Supergirl. And then here is Supergirl number 50. The uh, Turner Stargirl variant there. Her cover got this signed by Jamal Weigel at... One of the C2E2s, who knows when. Supergirl 50th issue, featuring a tale by Helen Slater, who played Supergirl in the movie. Uh, Gates, Igo, Seibel, McKenna, Black, and Chang. Uh, yeah, so, whew, fantastic uh, cover there. Man, that Supergirl, man, Supergirl run was dope. The Power Girl run was as well. It only ran like 27 issues. It started out with uh, Jimmy Palmiotti, Amanda Connor, who's amazing. 
and uh, Paul Mounts, who was or is her uh, frequent colorist. I don't know. If, I guess she. I, don't, I guess she does her inks, her own inks. I don't know. But yeah, uh, frequent there. Let's see what else we got here. Oh man, we got some gems. I might just go through the rest of this DC proper, but I got some wild storm stuff in here after. Yeah, we'll just finish up with these right here. Uh, Superman 75, get this. Hey, hanging off the flag, there, or uh, hanging off that stick there in the crown. The death of Superman. Just had to, I saw this, this was cheap somewhere, just had to grab it. And then Superman 123, I just wanna remember wanting this just cause this Superman blue just looked cool. Dan Jurgens, Ron Friends, and Joe Rubenstein. Ready for the next century. There's also, this is, so after, oh, it's kind of, I don't really, I don't think I remember this being embossed here. I think this, is that embossed the right term? Because you can feel the texture on the suit there. And on the logo. Huh, that's cool. The title, I mean. But anyways, uh, Superman Blue. New, Superman Blue, Superman Red, new costumes, and new powers. I don't know if those powers ever got like just kind of taken away or if they still exist. I don't remember the extent of them, but and this one got this one just because Ed, Ed Ed Bennis, Superman one oh, 218, burn, and also Mark Verhayden. Verhayden, that cover looks cool, but yeah, I was like, man, Ed Bennis, yeah, and this next one's absolute gem. Superman 675, Alex Ross, get this one. And these like first few issues right here were probably some of my first Superman comics, honestly. And yeah, they probably were before uh, any other stuff there. Like within the last few years, especially before I started reading some of the titles regularly, Action Comics and just picking up some issues like The Four Tomorrow. Well, I had that in trade. But then I picked up some of the single issues when I can, if I find them cheap. And then a lot of this stuff with like Ed Bennis and Dexter Vines, Ed McGinnis and Dexter Vines that I've kind of showed off uh, periodically, especially a bunch that I picked up last month, give or take. And Superman, Batman, Jeff Lowe, Michael Turner, look up, look up in the sky. So number nine, this is part of the Supergirl Returns arc there. So this was, where's the data? That was on here. Oh wait. Oh that way so 2004 so yeah this was right before so after this run then her series started and this one will look familiar look at that nice and set supergirl or superman batman number 13 michael turner peter stargawal obviously yeah to get this one i might have a couple copies of this because it's an absolute gem as you can tell just look at that supergirl and we finish up with wonder woman because What's a DC collection video without a little bit of Wonder Woman love? So Alan Heinberg, Terry Dotson, Rachel Dotson, Wonder Woman number one from 2006. And then jump up to 35, you got Wonder Woman and Black Canary, Aaron LePrestry and Matt Ryan, Whoop, Gail Simone, I don't know if I already mentioned that. So number 34 there. And then 35, signed by Gail Simone. Got that signed at C2E2. Did I get Yeah, but got both of those signed by Gail Simone. I uh, wonder why I didn't ever got this one signed by Terry and Rachel Dodson. I don't know if I had it by her then. But I know I picked up some of the Gail Simone stuff because I like Gail Simone. So I was like, oh, you know, let me go check out some of her Wonder Woman because I had already read some of her Birds of Prey. And what else? I'm trying to, this was... Let me just come up. Oh, 2009. And I think I went back to get these. So these ones had already been out. Uh, but it's pretty cool stuff here. Uh, Wonder Woman Black Canary, which obviously an interest or dope pairing because they're just two badass and well beloved characters there. So yeah. Oh man, so much cool stuff there. That was pretty solid though. Let's see. Uh, where we at? Oh my goodness. So yeah, then we get into some Wildstorm stuff. I'll give you a teaser as to what this is, something near and dear to me. First book, Gears of War, number one, The Crimson Omen right there, signed by Joshua Ortega, who wrote some of the comics, and then he's also a writer on the game. I think it's Liam Sharp. That might have been Liam Sharp before I ever knew who Liam Sharp actually was. So yeah, we got a bunch of Gears of War. 
Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, Wildstorm stuff and then some more indie stuff in this container as well. So, well, we're gonna save it there, just do all the DC stuff and a little Wildstorm teaser. But yeah, uh, I just wanted to do this because this is just, again, one of my favorite comic, uh, comic book pastimes outside of just reading. It's just flipping through my books and sometimes I'll pull stuff out and just to uh, look through the art and just reminisce of some of the stories. I'll flip through the cover art, remember the creators. If I have signed books, like, oh, try to remember back to when I had to sign like Gail Simone stuff. And I don't think any of those were, books were signed by Ed Bennis. I think all those are still separated. I haven't put those back into the rest of my collection yet. Uh, got some Power Girl, Super Girl stuff there. Jamal Igo, I met him a couple times. He's a dope dude. Uh, yeah, just Justice League. Again, I'm so happy that I actually finished that run because that's one that I didn't want to actually read or finish reading once I uh, kind of jumped onto that Batman, of course, Black Lightning, and Justice. I'm actually, I'm dead ass. I'm about to reread re re this this weekend. Matter of fact, just so I don't have to go digging through it again, <laughs> pull these out because I'm rereading this this weekend because <laughs> I've been wanting to. But yeah, uh, that's that. Uh, let me know, like, you want to see more of these videos? What are some, like, do you enjoy, like, how often do you just go through your comics, your short boxes, your long boxes, whatever you use to store your comics, and just flip through just for the hell of it, just reminisce about uh, stories and good or bad, what I, whatever, quality aside, but just kind of flipping through, like, oh, man, I remember this. Oh, yeah, this is when this character did this, and there was this thing, and these people died, and these people did this, or whatever else, like, Whoever happened, like there was this moment between these characters, this group of characters, and this team, like just whatever. Share all that in the comments below. This is cool stuff. Ugh. So much fun. And I was like trying to decide. I was going through a couple, couple of totes. I was like, oh, which one? Will I, which one will I do? And because of the way it's kind of set up right now, this one was kind of convenient to reach, and also contained a uh, solid mix of titles. Well. Even though it's mostly, I went through mostly DC stuff. And then the rest of this is Wildstorm with some IDW in here. Had a couple of, uh, actually, no, just one Devil's Due title. This is Blade of Kimura, number one, DDP, Devil's Due. It was solid. I don't think it ever got finished, though. Ron Mars, Ron Mars and Graf, wait, what the fuck did that say? Graphic, oh, Graphics Mix. Uh, yeah, we got Graham Crackers on that. I remember why that is. But yeah, uh, so that's that. Uh, yeah, share your thoughts in comments below. Happy reading, happy hunting, happy collecting. This is Gino Dragon. Thanks for watching and peace out.